You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsted. Ladies and gents, this is Kevin Kirsted, host of Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. I hope you're enjoying the show. Truth on Tap is focused on bringing you absolute truth about everything from mainstream media to comedy, from psychology to the paranormal. This show keeps it real, not the fake kind of real, the real kind of real. That same spirit also covers our Caps on Tap show about the Washington Capitals. Caps on Tap shows air only after Capitals wins at this time. Please come like our Facebook page and join the conversation at Facebook.com slash Truth on Tap show. Truth on Tap has been picked up and promoted by iHeartRadio, the internet audio mega monster. So shows are available there as well as on Spreaker and a limited selection on iTunes. To get in on a show's chat, you can chat from the Facebook page I mentioned or or go to www.spreaker.com slash user slash truth on tap and look for the live episode or call in at 910 no lying that's 910-665-9464 thanks again for checking out truth on tap and caps on tap you're listening to truth on tap with host Opening up the truth pipeline for these bitches. Truth. Truth on tap. Truth. Truth on tap. It's like being born again. August 3rd, 2014, 10 of the clock, not the Glock or the cock, but the clock PM, that stands for Papa Mama. And you're listening to Truth on Top. We're listening to Eno's generic hip hop session one, My Little Shot in the Arm. The goddamn song is so short, it's almost over by the time I get done announcing it. But you know what? We got stuff after that coming. We got Genghis featuring Stereo Black Star, Super Negro, George Linus DJ Arcade Pulse, the George Linus remix, Eno's Advanced Bass Cam, Alex's Purple Nurkle featuring Goldfish, and then I, I don't know what because I have to get into this utopia that I'm going to build, this perfect world, haven't planned it, just going to do it. And I got some news to talk about. We're going to talk about the news tonight. And I'm going off on Alex Jones again. He can't get away from me. He can't get away from me. I'm like a bad fungus, you know? Once you fucking got me, you got me. I'm all over your ass. You can use creams. I'm coming back. I'll lay low when the when the cream's being applied, but I'm coming back. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just, you, you can't fuck with people on the scale he fucks with people and get away with it. I'm coming for you. Well, I got it, you know, something ignites your passion. So for some people, it can be getting behind somebody. Other people, it can be going off on somebody. I'm going off on Alex Jones. That's how it is. You got a problem with it? Tune the fuck out. You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kears. <laughs> Wes Johnson doing the voice over there. Find him at WesJohnson.com, the most talented voice actor in the known universe. I, I can't give him credit for being the most talented in the unknown universe. Uh, Genghis features Stereo Black Star Super Negro. This song pisses me off. I, I need something to get my blood pressure up to get me going on this show. And you fuckers love it too, don't you? Why do you like to watch Manny Pacquiao fight? Huh? Did you know that war has become a commercial endeavor. And I'm going to prove it tonight. Yeah, I am. French rap, bitches. Yeah. It is a hard Negro in France. He don't need croissants. He, he won't have any part of that. Uh, he, he's not having cafe au lait. Uh, he's going to fire a gun later in the song you'll hear, but all that does is start a foot race. People are all looking for the, the tape. I want to win. I, I have to run. I Oh no, I've already started drinking wine. I better catch the next marathon. You fuckers in France. You fuckers. France will not look like my utopia. Not a bit. Not a bit. 
Yeah, sorry about that, France. I love your language, though. It's a gorgeous language. I love it. Yeah, listen to it. E even these hard motherfuckers trying to be rappers, you know. I just see them in, in these little, you know, they're on the sidewalk, and one of them is painting a Monet, and the other one has a little monkey that's playing a, a tiny fiddle, and they're collecting money, and there's a mime beside them doing these fake movements about being a gangster, and there it is, man. There's your French gangster. It's, it's, it's comedy and tragedy, but they don't know that it's also tragedy. They, they don't even know it's comedy. They think it's real. It's comedy and tragedy, I'm telling you that. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. I just need to feel this song for a second. Let it truly get my heart rate and blood pressure up. There's the gun. Oh, you didn't shoot nothing. You, everybody's running now. But they're looking for the marathon line because you don't be shooting people in France. Black Yeah. I wonder I wonder what Don Imus would have to say about this. Well, I'll damn it, Mom. I don't think I would listen to French rap from a German asshole. Oh, fuck you, Don Imus. That's why it's my show. Yep. Come on and tell me what to put on my show, Don Imus. You goddamn pancake ass. The fuck is wrong with you, Don Imus? I know you're drunk all the time. You, you fool people, but you don't fool me. I can just about smell the mad dog over the airwaves. Yeah, I check up on you. I'm stalking you a little, just like I stalk Alex Jones a little. I don't hate Don Imus, though. I just like he's a motherfucker, that's all. Oh, you can, you can believe that. I don't want to have a reason for it. Yeah. And uh, here comes George Elinus with Pulse. As we play that in the background, we'll slip into the next phase of our existence here. This one fires me up a little too. You know, I love that song, Smack My Bitch Up. And yet, when I say things, because I insist on enunciation, because I want to, for some reason in my subconscious mind, believe that my 80 grand in student loans for English meant something, um, I sound like Brian Williams. And that's just going to be the way it is. I'm not going gangster. I, I didn't go to school that long to come fucking speak slang to you. All right, I make up my own words. I have the right to do that. I like to use the language the way it was designed, though. Showing that you have an intelligent command of your language is the first sign that you're going to be successful at any endeavor. Yeah. Listen to these people on TV that do not know how to use adverbs. Don't fucking use them if you don't know how to use them. It's ridiculous what you hear in the news. Some of the goddamn grammar. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm losing patience with this kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to have to design some way to punish these people. Maybe it'll just be my show. If my show gets big enough, I'll call them out every day. Hey, you, motherfucker over there. Uh, you fucked up. And if kids are listening to you, they're going to fuck up. And I don't like it. How about that? Yeah, there's a call of the wild in this song. It's speaking to my primitive man. I'm feeling a primordial uprising of anger, grief, and excitement. A push towards some goal. I'm not sure what it is yet. Most people aren't when they get fired up. They just know something got to be done. Something got to be done, man. Yeah, so, so the song's doing that for me, and I'm looking at the news headlines here, and I'm, I'm going down, I went ahead and went to Google News, and I'm going down the headlines, one after the other, after the other, after the other. I'm going, I, I gotta talk about this. Normally I pick about one out of ten I wanna talk about. All kinds of funky news going on today. Jesus Louise. My God, man. Yeah, my perfect world trip. First thing we got to do is get rid of humans, so that's going to make it boring for everybody. So I'm not even going to go there. I mean, I'll talk about it, but... Well, we're fucked up. We're fucked up. People don't want to admit it. Ego won't let you admit that, will it? We are a shitty design. 
I mean, we're the best of the best right now, but that doesn't mean anything. You know, if you go into a Walmart, you're not going to find Rolexes. We're just the best of our environment. Don't, don't be too proud of being a human. Don't be. Not if you want to be realistic in your assessment of what we are. Life is everywhere in the universe. We're pretty sure of that now. And we are not at the top of the totem pole. Negative there, Will Rogers. Yep, here comes Eno's advanced base camp. With host, Kevin And I guess what I'll do after advanced, advanced base, base camp, camp now. well, let's let him talk. The elevation up here is uh, about 18,500 feet, maybe a little bit more. My That's what it's like when I stand up. Meters. So that puts us above really any peak in the continental United States outside of Alaska. It's uh, it quite a surprise to get here and see advanced base camp. He needs to blow his nose. And you know, speaking of that, a lot of these radio hosts need to blow their nose. Dynamis, you're an example. Howard Stern, you sound like your nose is clogged up. What is it about nasal? What well, gives someone a radio voice? Well, fuck that. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to learn to talk like people who have been famous on the radio before. Jesus Christ. You ever look at the film? Uh, from the media from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, everyone sounds I goddamn identical. Holy shit. You talk about sheeple? Everyone sounds like James Cagney. What the fuck was that? Holy shit. Oh my god. I mean, I, and I even saw, I was looking at some old footage, something to do with UFOs or something I was looking up, and saw this friggin' Middle Eastern dude who had learned English, and he was talking just like everyone else. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. That was scary. I'm glad we snapped out of that shit. Have your own voice, people. Yeah, your own voice, your, your voice, whatever it is. I, and I'm talking about this in a general sense, not your specific voice, but actually both. Will become something special at least to you, and it may become special to others. Whatever it is, don't let it belong to someone else. You know, I imitate voices, I have fun doing that, but I would never adopt one to be mine. Get the fuck out of here. Only you have your voice. Only you can stop forest fires. Yeah, I can't. Only you can, said Smokey. So I, I just, you know, I'll throw my cigarettes in the dry leaves. Because only you can, he said it. And uh, I, I believe talking bears. I've always had a problem with that. Uh, it probably is not a wise thing to do, but if you show me a talking bear, I I'm not questioning his motivation. I, I, I guess I just trust them. They're, they're very trustworthy looking creatures. They don't, you can't see them involved in a scandal. Can you, can you imagine Papa Bear and you find out it wasn't porridge at all? He, he had a meth lab and the, and the girl broke in and she tried some of his meth and it was way too strong. And, so, and then tried some of the some of the baby's meth and it was way too weak but tried some of the mama's meth and it was just right you know it was uh, there were there were a great many illusions happening w within the brain of the girl Goldilocks uh, Goldilocks was was Goldie meth head then and uh, ten years later she lost her teeth and was selling her body and uh, we, we have a you know, but she, the problem is she, she tried the daddy's meth. And once you've tried the hard stuff, everything else kind of seems kind of weak. So yeah, maybe the mama's meth was perfect, but she got a taste for the daddy's meth. And once you've had the best, everything else is just small in comparison, you know. So, you know, now she's walking with a cane. She's gotten into the crock. So she has lost a leg, unfortunately. And uh, when she runs from people, it sounds like this, click talk, click talk, click talk. Yeah, poor Goldilocks, you know, found just the right meth, but, and, you know, she needed more and more. Yeah, that's, that's advanced base camp. Uh, I think I'm going to hold off on Purple Nurple so we can talk some here. Yeah. Purple Nurple is going to wait for me to be ready for it. That's being in command of your radio show. 
Uh, I will not take no from an a for an answer fr from my software. That's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's funny. It, Apocalypse, tell me you're not doing a show right now. And, and if you are, God damn you, why didn't you tell me? Because I wouldn't have done a show at the same time as you. You fucked hard. Did you? My mother's basement four. A uh, conversation about my brain generator not having enough fuel. Red Lobster is trying to be extra classy. Barco gets slapped digitally as usual by me and put in her place. I didn't realize Barco was female. See how I don't know? Alan Wayne versus Spreakers and his advancement outside of drama related shows. Okay. Dyslex getting drunk and dot dot dot. A and I can't read the rest because uh, I can't see it right now. So anyway, he he's got that thing going. I don't think it's live right now. Actually, I'm going to go check it. Uh, because if it is, it wouldn't it be a weird thing for me to talk to you over my show live while talking to him on his show live. Uh, I'm not afraid to fuck with the Matrix. Not at all. You'll, you'll see the black cat cross the hallway several times in a row when I'm in the house. Because uh, I make strange shit happen. No, it's not live. It's not live. So I can't do that. <clears throat> but yeah, I have a way of finding live shows. And I can just about guarantee you... Whoa, 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 Apocalypse. Hold up. Yeah, let's stop that. I forgot when you pulled up the show, it automatically plays. And uh, he, he got me with the bagpipes. You know, he blew me out of there with the bagpipes. Jesus Christ, Apocalypse. All right, let me go see what's live now. The show you're listening to right now, Truth on Tap, will be a featured iHeart show on Spreaker. I'll be sure to brag ridiculously large amounts when that happens <clears throat> and here's what i don't like live now these shows are live now mine should be at the top and i'm looking right now as if i had just come in browsing and it's way it's it's down like i don't know it's like 30 down out of maybe uh I don't know, a, a 100 or 150. That's not good enough. I ought to be on top, bitches. Yeah. Uh, the people that are beating me, Radio Immaculata. I don't even know what that means. Uh, you know, it's, don't put Spanish-speaking radio up there to English speakers. I should be able to filter out foreign language radio shows. Dave Ant, nonstop, 24 Hours of Hell. McCartney, The Cure for the Common something. Uh, yeah, not a lot of, I don't know, Sharp Radio's on there, Radio Time Machine. I think a lot of these are musical. Well, well, well some of them are talk. Here's the Go Lightly Marsh something from Freedom Talk Radio, Scrubs Radio. Yeah, all right, so there's some good talk shows going on there, but I, I, I don't know any of those people. I thought I would. I thought I'd recognize one where I could jump in and fuck with them while I'm on my show, but that's not going to happen this show. So, if I wanted to design a perfect world, would I have to scratch everything and start over? Well, not really. I mean, I haven't put a lot of thought into this, but let's do it on the fly. I'm all for exercising your creativity. Human beings believe that we are something really special. I have a problem with that, because I compare it to what I can imagine, not what I've seen. And that puts the total capacity of a living creature in all good things way high. And we're not near that high mark. So I have to rethink the human being as part of any perfect world. But if we're not here to imagine it, enjoy it, and interpret it, well, what good is it? What, why even talk about it during my human experience with you on the radio if humans aren't going to be here to be part of the next world? If I were building some foreign world and I wanted it to be perfect, yeah, I could say, okay, I don't think humans should be on this one. Let's make this one perfect. But what would I put there in place? Would there be anybody present on the planet to try to protect the planet itself from whatever it was that was going to grow on it? Maybe that is a natural evolution. Have you ever thought about that? We grew. We grew. We have stuff that can get on our skin. And then we have stuff that fights it. So how do you know that Mother Earth just didn't make an allowance for humans to grow so that someone would be there to protect her? Then again... They're mostly protecting her from themselves, but that's a self-controlling mechanism because look at the other stuff we protect her from. You know, we use uh, sea buffers. We use uh, 
uh, seismographic equipment to figure out you know where earthquake zones are going to be in tidal wave and flood zones and then we prevent against them and it's not just ourselves that we're protecting in that we're protecting animals too so maybe mother nature's smarter than we think and she's got us here to make sure nothing happens to her my feeling is there is no grand spirit of mother nature we all came up on this rock through time and fortune and it's a miracle that we've made it this far and i don't know how much farther we'll make it but i can tell you that it isn't going to end anytime soon and that is not what someone like an alex jones would have you believe alex jones sinks to a new low today he said this was, this was actually a couple weeks ago i think he said it because the article was written july 10th said uh, alex jones sinks to a new low call him michelle obama the first tranny the first tranny um he was serious people no I, I know you're saying kev don't you don't have to bother i do have to bother i do have to bother with this uh he, he's not getting away from me and i want to tell you something he said and i want you to draw everything you need to from this quote here it goes <coughs> quote she doesn't look like any black woman I've ever known, Jones said. She's got shoulders that are wider than a man's, which physiologically doesn't happen. You can put three heads on a man's shoulders and two heads on a woman's shoulders. That's a known anatomy. That's a known anatomy, is how he finished that quote. Are you letting that sink in? This is the man that's telling you that 9-11 was an inside job. This is a man that's telling you that five or, five or ten people are in control of the whole goddamn globe. This is the man that's telling you that they're coming for your guns. So I ask you, what are your evidential requirements? Where do you set the bar before you're convinced of something? What does it take to make you believe that there is a real threat? Don't let it be this man. What this man is doing is giving you answers where nobody else will because the intelligent people know that these are complex issues, not the tranny thing, but that they don't have simple answers. And it's not a simple answer. And it's usually complex and it's usually muddy. He likes to tidy them up, just throw some shit out there to give you an answer, and you think he's a goddamn genius. Fact check him. Do your own research, and you're going to see that this clown has found one simple weakness in the human psyche, a very simple one. And that is the need for the fearful creature to know what all of his threats are. And he's telling you what to think. And you're buying it because he's giving you something to put in the holes in your education. The intelligent person does not need to have those holes filled in. Those holes are there waiting for new evidence, not for new bullshit. Not in the intelligent person's mind. They'll wait. They'll wait for evidence. They will not fill it in with the shit that he gives you to spackle the holes in your education with. Don't let an Alex Jones lead you down a dark hallway to a dark room to say there's a boogeyman in there. And when you flick on the light, it's like any other room anywhere you've ever seen. Fuck Alex Jones. I'm so sick of what he's doing. Y you might think, well, Kevin, why do you even give him any attention? Because I see what he's doing. I figured it out. I figured out how he's playing the fear and how it's working for him. And it just... This is him going off the deep end. The man is a nutcase, people. He is psychologically would classify in at least 30 different disorders in the DSM. I guarantee goddamn tea it. At least 30 conditions. And to see people follow him scares me a little. I mean, if you believe in social Darwinism, then the philosophy is let them follow, Kevin. They're all going to walk off a cliff. It'll make the human race a smarter race for it. You're right. You're right. It will. And if I were that kind of person, I would. I would probably give them a ride to the top of the cliff. Why, why slow down the, the pace at which they're going to meet their death? But uh, I, I want to rescue people. 
I, I got a need to rescue people if I can and just get them over to logic. And he doesn't sell logic. He doesn't use logic. His staff does not need logic. His listeners do not require logic. What they need is an answer. What they need is a clean black and white answer to blame their problems on. Get away from Alex Jones, Alex Jones fans. Trust me on that. All you've got to do is take any five of his stories. Go ahead and look them up. They could be from five years ago. They could be from two years ago. Just pick five of his random stories. And then go fact check the living shit out of them. And when you get your answer, and you will, you're going to find that he wasn't honest with you. And that ought to take away your trust for what he says. If it doesn't, this show, nor logic, nor reason, nor critical thinking, nor Pythagoras, Socrates, Kant, Clemens, anybody is going to be able to help you think. And these are great philosophers and, and authors from our past that I was referring to. People that I like to model my own thinking after. You know, and, I, and it's all I can do is model it after them. I can't think exactly how they thought. There was an entirely different contextual reality for them. They lived in different times. They had different demands. I told you earlier, war has become commercialized. It is. You want me to prove it? Look at this shit. So I'm reading the headlines here. And it says, heavy fighting in Gaza before pause called. Sound familiar? It is familiar. About a week ago, they had a 12-hour ceasefire. Don't you see what's happening? They're fighting in rounds now, like fucking MMA fighters. They have commercialized warfare, and the recipient of the pay-per-view funds are the major news organizations. We didn't used to fight wars like this. Wars used to be fought for honor, or because you were attacked, or because you absolutely couldn't handle that some other country was living differently than you. I mean, at least it was something that was intrinsic. Now it's entirely topical. What a joke. First of all, you're not going to solve the Middle East peace problem between Israel and Palestine. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Those two religions, that close together, present an issue that cannot be solved except for the moving of one completely away from the other or the death of one or both sorry I've <laughs> that's it you tell me what the solution don't you think if there was a solution it would be in place already the solution is what you're seeing right now that is fight and kill it's just that they're doing it in rounds now because that fits the major news network coverage better yeah sad thing that's going on there <coughs> Heavy fighting in Gaza before pause called. Strategic pause leaves open possibility of renewed Israeli assault on Hamas. Ay, ay, ay. Um, you know, that's depressing. I don't want to get into it because, like I just said, that's, that's the bottom line. It's not going to be solved. It's going to be solved by people dying. That, and, that's, and then uh, you might get 60 years of peace. Good for you. They're going to be back at it. They're going to be right back at it. The religions are too extreme and too opposed in close proximity. That is all of the ingredients you need for an unstable area. That's all you need. And you tell me what's going to change. Is the location going to change? Are the Israelis going to move out? Leave Jerusalem behind? No. Are the Palestinians going to move away and say, Look, you guys keep it. Fuck it. We're tired of fighting. No. No. It's their holy land too. And the two religions do not agree with one another. They're telling each other, your invisible dude is wrong. My invisible dude is right. Therefore, you've got to die. What a sad state of affairs we're in. You know, human beings suck pretty much. Let's go ahead and admit that. If we could admit that, we'll at least know where we stand. We pretty much suck. Uh, we can't be trusted. Uh, uh, even as a nation to 
hold to our word. We can't be trusted to show up when our allies need us. We can't be trusted to set an example for the world when we're the most powerful nation in the world. When you look at a situation like Syria, where we should have been in there the first time somebody had to watch their 10-year-old gang raped by Assad's regime and then see their family decapitated. So we pretty much suck. We pretty much suck when we go to war over political mistakes. Somebody got their feelings hurt, and now bullets are flying. I don't know how we've made it this far. Not with nuclear weapons and the high-powered arsenal that we've got to fight with now across the globe. I don't know how we've made it this far. I definitely am interested in seeing us get some humans to Mars and the moon and some orbiting space stations and spreading this shit out because there's a decent chance that within a couple of hundred years we really do decimate the population. Uh, people aren't stable. People aren't stable. You know, I think the basic human condition is one of insanity. If you look at pure logic, we, pure logic is not how a human mind works. There is no human mind I've ever known of that worked on pure logic because emotion has always played a part. And yes, that's part of what makes us human, but it's also part of what makes us flawed. Machines don't make mistakes if the code is correct. So watch what happens with the robots. Uh, between the years 2030 and 2040, the personal robot is going to be the most sought after appliance in the world. That's coming. That's real. And uh, they don't make mistakes. You program them. If the programming is correct, the robot is correct. They don't make mistakes. They don't make emotional decisions. They don't have to decide whether or not to come in and get you if the house is burning down. They come in if that's what they're programmed to do. They don't have to worry about fear coming into the equation. It's logic. It's math. It's NAND gates and AND gates and OR gates and NOR gates. It's ones and zeros. I don't know where I was going with that, but maybe that's my perfect world. Everybody's afraid of robots. I say bring them the fuck on. You think we can't make robots that will control other robots? Of course we can. Self-replication, it can be controlled. It's controlled through programming. If evil dudes make bad robots, we'll have enough good robots to fuck them up. Okay? That's the way it's going to work. So don't be afraid of robots. I can't wait until we replace law enforcement with robots. That's coming. That'll be here within a couple hundred years. They won't make mistakes. You can't bribe them. You can't. You can't offer them sex for favors. You saw the woman on YouTube that said, can't we solve this with sex instead of you taking me to jail for DUI? No, nope, we'll work with a robot. Yeah, ma'am, if you can't walk the line and misstep less than two times per 11 steps, I am forced by the code to place you under arrest and take you downtown to where humans can do further analysis of your crime. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Then we're going to have our judges are going to be robots. The juries are going to be robots. It's all going to be computer with human oversight. There will always be human oversight, just like there's human oversight with drones right now that strike fear in the hearts of anybody in the Middle East because you won't even hear the missiles coming. So we think that's enough. If we didn't think it was enough, we wouldn't allow drones, would we? But we do. So if you don't think we're already of the mindset that we'll let machines do our work for us as long as there's a human overwatching, uh, you're wrong. You, you need to review what's happening right now. That's how robots are going to go. And I think we'll be better for it. Just got to make sure the code's right. Just got to make sure the code's right. Universal application of law, that's a beautiful thing to me. It shouldn't matter to me what judge I get, which day, which attorney, which jury was selected. None of that should matter. The outcome should be already decided based on my behavior and the laws. That's it. Nothing else. Guy Shay's in the chat room. Oh my goodness. The matrix is always what it is. Subjective thinking is false math. It is false math. You're right. Alex Jones loves the guessing game. Keep guessing and maybe one day he will hit the right take claim and boom superhero of the drones of society, the law of info wars. <clears throat> yeah, and he hasn't been right about any goddamn thing. Uh, I don't know what that whole thing he was doing. I I'll give him some credit for when he broke into the uh, 
secret society thing, that's cool. You want to do some investigative journalism and find out what's going on there, build a burger? Fine. Go ahead and do that and expose it. Just write your story. But all the other shit he's saying, fucking A, man. He's, he is out there. He is unstable. I knew he was unstable when I saw him on Piers Morgan, guy. I knew it. I had no question about it. I said, look at this motherfucker. He is really about one wire short of a bushel of fucking crazy, whatever that meant. I mean, he was ready to snap. I mean, snap, crackle, pop, snap, or you don't come back from it. White jackets aren't enough. You can break out of those. He chews through them. He's Hannibal Lecter. Uh, but he's Hannibal Lecter in a fat Texan's body. It's, a, it's terrifying, isn't it? Because the wisdom isn't there. With Hannibal, you had wisdom. That's interesting. With Alex Jones, you've just got a Tasmanian goddamn devil in a human body. The fuck is wrong with him? Yeah. The biggest negative this nation has is the three ball wrecking crew. Jones, Obama, and Boehner. Between the three and the U.S. is in a dick measuring contest with a fat black in the heck. <laughs> All right, some of you guys hate Guy Shea. I don't, I don't know why. I don't get into your fighting. I don't want to hear it. He's in my chat room right now. He's bothered to stop by my show, and he's funny, and I'm going to laugh at him. So fuck you. That's what I have to say. And if you don't like Guy Shea, take it up with him. He had never done anything to me. We, the guilty of the apathy party sit on our hands mass voters and let it all take place sad we are the last roman empire in history you think we'll be the last one a lot of people do think we're going that way i mean you know that or you wouldn't have said it uh you know free society democratically elected next thing you know kaput kaput i think it starts with corruption i, I think corruption is the cancer that then begins to metastasize and take down a society like ours Heard he likes to get juiced up and hit the political bar and grills. Uh, who likes to get juiced up? Which one? Are you talking about Alex Jones? Because that's fucking scary right there. Uh, we're going to take a break here in a minute and play you a couple songs so I can get a refill on my coffee because, you know, the thing about dealing with you humans, and I don't even know if I'm a human, I think I might be an alien. I actually put that in the back of my, my book that Kevin came here from a distant galaxy. Because every one of you scares the shit out of me. Every last one of you. And uh, I, that's why I don't know if I'm human. It doesn't, why should I question my own species? Uh, but I do. I do. Well, blame, blame Socrates. He's the fucker that got into my subconscious. That fucker. And Freud. People coming up to me quoting Freud, get the fuck out of here. You know what Freud was to psychology? He's what Stephen King is to, lit to the literary world, okay? He sold what was popular in his day. Sometimes, even he said, a cigar is just a goddamn cigar. Sigmund Freud should have stayed an MD. He was a fine MD. Once he got into psychology and started talking about fucking Oedipus complex and all that bullshit, him and his little fucktardian goatee, he fucking vacated the planet of logic and reason and went into Alex Jonesia, where little boys have crushes on their moms and little girls have crushes on their dads, and sometimes a cigar is not a cigar. It's a goddamn phallic symbol. <sighs> yeah, I was talking about Jones there. Uh, well... You know, I, I can't imagine him drunk. That's all I can say about Alex Jones. He's terrifying sober. Terrifying. And I, I'm not scared of anybody, but I'm saying terrifying in the fact that he has masses following him. You know, Charles Manson had a small mass following him. Uh, what was the dude's name? Jones? Was it Tom Jones? I can't remember his first name. That had all the people commit suicide. Uh, fuck him too. And if you can get the blind to follow you down a blind path and walk off the cliff in the middle of the night... Well, you've made your mark. You know, you've written your name in history. Good for you. The guy that climbed the tower with the high-powered rifle, he did that. Cho did it. Yeah, Lee Harvey Oswald did it. Yes, sir. Got plenty over history that have put their name in there by fucking up. Heard a bar recording of him and crew getting hammered. Sees one of his political targets, young adult daughters, and attempts to hit on her. 
bashed out of his head drunk classic. Um, that's just, that sounds just like him. That, that sounds just like something he'd do. Oh my God. He is so Texan. And I'm not hating on Texas tonight, but I'll tell you something. People from Texas and people from New York City, more than any other place in this great country of ours, who states I have been in 47 of, of those two places, I have not seen a more pompous ass crowd. So proud of where they came from. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody from Texas or everybody from New York City comes out of there wearing it like a big badge on their arm. But a good number do. And fuck them. Because where you're born in this country doesn't give you any advantage in any way other than in your own fucked up ego. Where you're born means nothing. It means where your mom decided to spit you out of her big fat vagina. That's the only thing you're, where you're born means. That's right. I'm being kind of vile now, but, <laughs> but you know, I don't know. Reverend Jerry Jones, oh uh, yeah, that's right, uh, Jonestown, Africa. Yep, drinking the Kool-Aid, drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, you know, that, that's one of many examples that I think we can draw some fair parallels to Alex Jones and his followers. He's given them easy answers. They want easy answers. You people don't realize it if you don't think about it, but when you compare science and religion, and they are at odds right now, one of them has easy answers, and one of them has hard answers. One of them does not require evidence. It requires whatever interpretation you want to use from whatever invisible motherfucker you want to worship. The other one requires empirical data collection and repeatable controlled conditions. So which one are you going to follow if you had to just pick one? I, I know what I'm going to follow. Now, if you want to follow your invisible dude, those are matters of faith. I don't discuss those as far as their validity because you cannot win that argument. And I don't have arguments that I can't win. It makes no sense. I don't even question them. It's like you're never going to fix people in that way. People that want to believe that there's definitely an afterlife organized by an intelligent being that's far beyond our ability to even perceive, I can't help them. Maybe they're right. Uh, you can't prove them wrong. So why bother with that argument? Let them believe it. It's not going to hurt anything until they start killing people. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I think the northern part of Maryland guy says is up there on the self-worth list. Are they? I, I haven't noticed that guy. I, I haven't really been in public too much in the past five years, so things that have changed since then I wouldn't really know about. I've lived in a small corner of a small town doing my small town thing. Uh, but I was up in Northern Virginia and doing jobs in D.C. and Maryland, working on copiers and computers up there uh, from 2008 to 2010. And uh, so I was getting some samples of it, but I didn't, I don't know, I didn't pick up on the snobbery, probably because I wasn't paying attention. But yeah, these people, you know, from Texas, we are going to secede from the Union. Gosh damn it, the Obama. That Obama is an evil one. We have to secede from the Union. I'm not having me a nigger president. No, sir, Reebok. There must be some black curly hairs in the White House shower. I can't stand it. I just can't stand it. How in the hell could we have a nigger in office? I can't stand it. We own them. They don't own us. We need to secede from the Union and be our own country and elect Rick Perry. Right? Because he had a rock at his house that said niggerhead. That's how he felt about them. He felt they had rocks in their brains. Well, whatever. Texas, go ahead and secede. If you have the right to do that and you can pull it off constitutionally, I encourage you to do it. We'll see you in line to get aid from the United States the next day. And as soon as a country threatens to invade you, well, I hope you've got a good ally like the U.S. <sighs> What I'm saying, Texas, is stop being so elitist in your views, like you're the only state that has it figured out, and fix the other 49 states. You're part of this country. People from your town or your state and towns in it have died to protect this whole country, not just Texas. And you have to make yourself a part of the country you want to be a part of instead of just trying to flee from it. Go fight the hard fights. You can do it. 
You can run for office. You can get on your c Congress. You can write letters to every damn body. You can create public awareness campaigns. You can use Fundly. You can start a radio show to get public support for whatever it is you want to see change. You don't just tuck tail and run. You fix it. If it's the other 49 states that are broken, fix us. You should be able to sell your ideas if they're that good. Alex Jones has followers. You can get followers. Jesus Christ. Reason, logic, out the window when emotion comes in. This makes the human being a remarkably weak creature. This makes the human being a puppet, not quite the same as Guy Shea's sock puppet, but a puppet nonetheless, who can be controlled once an arm is shoved up his ass. Yeah. Uh, Guy, we're going to take a break here. Thanks for stopping by, man. Um, I'm going to come back and we'll talk some more. We'll just have some fun, I think, in the second half of the show. We can talk more about this stuff. I'm kind of on a fucking soapbox here. I did not plan on getting on. You know, this was supposed to be a different kind of show, and uh, it hasn't been. I've been on my same, my same kick. So uh, maybe I'm becoming predictable, and uh, that would be a sad thing indeed. So I'm going to do what I can to keep that from becoming a truth. Let's see what we have here. I'm saving Purple Nurple to talk during. Low Tag Blanco Slumlord. I think I'm going to save that one too. Yeah. But I think you guys need to hear Rubber Rooms and Funny Pills again. So we'll play that because that's where you're going to end up. And what you're going to end up taking. And we'll throw one we have not played in a while. Well, we were talking about Texas. I feel a little bit of guilt. You know how you feel post-rage guilt. Yeah, I went off on Texas. So I'm going to play somebody called Texas Radio Fish Funk Change. There you go. We'll give Texas their little, their little place back. You know, let, them, let, them, let somebody speak for their voice since no one's standing up to defend them right now in my onslaught. Alex Jones is from Texas. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, now I know why they're so fucked up. Uh, so that'll be that, and let's see here, what else we got? Yeah, we'll play that, and then we'll play the Texas Radio Fish's Funk Change. And then by then, I should be back, and we'll talk during Purple Nurple, and try to have some, I don't know, some comedy, we'll fuck around, we'll get Guy Shea to see if he can piss somebody off, and we'll go from there. How's that sound to you? No, I, I didn't hear you. How does that sound to you? Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least we had, somebody thought it was funny. Uh, all right, well, that is that then, and here goes this.
get a surprise. See, you thought I wasn't going to be talking. You thought Texas Radio Fish was coming on. Fuck all that. This is my first overt exercise in not being predictable. I don't want to become predictable, so I'm going to change shit up. Alex, Purple Nurple, still applies. Why? We were talking about Texans, Texas Radio Fish. Instead, we were talking about Alex Jones, and now we're listening to Alex. But it's not that, Alex, and that's okay. It's related, and that's good enough. Kev likes to do theme nights. I did a theme night. We're doing Texas. We're doing Alex Jones. We're doing Fuck the World. Now we're going to fuck with some other people. Guy Shay's got some ideas. I had not planned on fucking with people this entire episode. It certainly was not my intent. When I first started, I honestly thought that I was going to have a radio show wherein I essentially was playing the game Spore trying to create a world that was perfect and for some reason Morgan Freeman has crossed my mind and if you try you can sound like Morgan Freeman who really just wanted to grow up and be uh, an actor in a movie 
thought would allow a white man who had taken his powers of God and made a monkey fly out of a Mexican's ass. Well, I'm working on Morgan. I'm working on it. You can't. I'm a white guy. Okay, give me time with Morgan Freeman. Uh, I got to work on that one. Pain management guy, listen, man. I understand that whole game with the doctors and with pain and with the medications they will and will not give you. I mean, I've been on everything from morphine to right now I'm just using herbal remedies, legal herbal remedies, not, not pot or anything. And uh, I go back and forth. It's like, you know, what a fucking thing that is once you have to deal with chronic pain. That, that is, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Well, maybe my worst enemy, but, but not just moderate enemies. I wouldn't wish it on them. serve you up a target well who do you really hate guy what motivates you man I have trouble when I listen to your show understanding what your proper motivation is and I'm saying that in the entirely British sense meaning what is the motivation that drives you forth on your show I have to get a little fired up for me to even be worth listening to my show sucks donkey dick when I'm not motivated I can't just sit there and fuck around I just have to do I have to go off on something and uh, I don't like being angry. I would much rather keep it comedic and, you know, make fun of the news in a Jimmy Fallon kind of way. But uh, I don't know. It's I, don't, I couldn't tell you really what motivates me. It's not an easy question to answer. There, there are a few things that motivate me. I'm not good when I see injustice. I'm not good when I see bigotry and a lot of unnecessary hatred. The truth on tap with hosts. Uh, what the fuck are they going to try to play next? Some more. I think we're just going to talk. Yeah, I don't feel like playing music right now. It's funny because, you know, I I was listening to, I think it was Truth Porn Militia. They were playing music in their background. Goofy Bones playing music in his. You were playing music in yours, guy. And I said, well, everybody's doing this. And I'd already thought about doing it myself because I'd heard some shows do it before. And I'd heard um, the one I always refer to was, uh, what's the dude's name? Shatner, who was on stage talking, just talking, not even doing poetry, just talking during a song. And I thought, that's fucking cool, because then you got two things going. Well, then I go reading, and there's a lot of advice out there, some of it now suggesting that you should have some ma music playing in the background if you're afraid of dead air. And dead air is deadly to a radio show. I'm going to have some right now while I take a sip of my coffee, because I don't care so much anymore. Yeah, dead air doesn't scare me like it used to. I call it time for reflection. Quiet time, kids. Put your mats down on the floor. We're going to take 15 minutes here and just rest our eyes. Fucking weirdos. Let's see. Uh, let's see what Guy's saying in here. He, he, if, he, if you have a target, if, if you have a target that you think needs to be shot at tonight, Guy, shoot it. Maybe, maybe I'll shoot with you. Maybe I'll try to defend him. It depends on what the, what the cause is. I'm looking at the news, though, while you're thinking about that. And... Uh, I was looking at where Senator King said that CIA torture was unjustifiable. Bullshit. All right, I'm going to put you people in a scenario very quickly here. Less than 30 seconds. It's 9-11. All right, the towers have been hit. They haven't fallen yet. The Pentagon's been hit. Then the White House gets hit. Then the Capitol building gets hit. Then the Sears Tower gets hit. We're up to like 10 o'clock now. And someone comes on and says, if only we were allowed to torture two terrorist convicts that we have in custody, we could stop this. There would come a breaking point for you. The Golden Gate Bridge takes the hit. The Washington Monument topples. Mount Rushmore gets blown up. The planes are still coming. There's not enough jets to take care of them all. They're shooting some passenger planes down. They're making mistakes and shooting down some innocent ones. Uh, at some point, you will decide torture them. Because it becomes a numbers game at that point. So when I see somebody take a position of authority on torture, what they're failing to do is say everybody has a breaking point. Every people the entire people of a nation have a breaking point where the majority vote, if it were an internet vote, would surpass 50% toward torture if it would stop the attacks.
Oh my god. U.S. doctor stricken with Ebola said to be improving. That's good. That's only news because they wanted to scare you. One guy coming into the U.S. with Ebola, with the hemorrhaging. Yeah, well, something's going to get you. You know, I was, I was working out the math. In China, 367 people died from an earthquake, which works out to roughly 0.000005% of their population. Just so you know, just want to keep that in context. That's also only about, let's see, one, two, three, and then that. So that's roughly three or four percent of the number that died today from hunger and hunger related illness that died in this earthquake. But let me guess, you haven't heard about any of those that have died from the hunger or hunger related illness. But you know about the 367 in China that died from the earth shaking. Just trying to put into context. Let's be real. Let's be real. Guy says, I get fired up when a mob goes after a single host or a host is so wrong and sure it becomes a mission to take down a host down with their own words. <coughs> I couldn't do that, man. There, there's, I mean, if you think about it, Alex Jones is a host, but what I'm going after is the blind... the blind following that he has that's really believing what he says it's almost as if i could forgive alex jones the character if he would just stop the lying but what you're talking about is person on person host on host attacks i, I don't like that either man i really don't i won't get involved in it i don't see think of any famous host you've ever known who really, really gets absorbed with going after those that attack them, don't you watch their professionalism just begin to fall, 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 until they disappear off the radar? A real pro just doesn't let it bother them. They'll mention it. They may even take on one once in a while. But they don't, they don't get consumed with it. I mean, the people that I've seen react the worst to other hosts attacking them are Bill O'Reilly, uh, I think Keith Olbermann has had some pretty bad reactions to host on host attacks. And these are just big names I'm talking about. Alex Jones seems to be numb to any attacks. Uh, I think it's because he knows he's full of shit and he just, you know, he feels defenseless against logic so he doesn't fight it. He just goes on leading his herd. I don't know. Um, it's vicious what I see on Spreaker, man. It's vicious. I wish it would stop. I say, guy, what you should do is if you have a decent following and your people like the show you present, just ignore them. Because nothing would bother them more than to just ignore them. You know, and people listening to me, you know, I, I had uh, the guy on the other night or yesterday that had a problem with you and Debbie Daly's had a problem with you and I'm sitting here going... I don't want to know about new problems that some hosts have with other hosts. Just, you know, do your thing. You know, if I enjoy listening to the show, I'll listen to it. That's why I don't get involved in these groups and stuff. I don't want to, well, if you like them, you must hate us. If you aren't with us, if, if you aren't with us, you're against us. Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, Spreaker host, if you're listening... Cut the shit, man. And I've done this show already. Look at read, Listen to my show on Bad Host. Just cut the shit. Stop attacking each other. You know, you've got so much you can do with your show. Guy says, I have panties in a bunch with this stupid presidential X order and the Congress steadfast disinterest in deportation issues. I agree with that. Uh, but I don't know what you're talking about with the X order. Presidential X order. I, I, I must have missed that. I don't know what you're talking about with that. So you'll have to inform me there, guy. But uh, as far as the show hosts go, c cut the shit, people. Just stop attacking each other. You look small if, to any intelligent listener listening on. Now, if you've been attacked once or twice and you go ahead and defend yourself, I get that. But once you put somebody in your crosshairs, you know, it, it just looks like rage at that point. And that does, that's not attractive to anybody. You know, it's just not. It's, 
I don't know. Uh, when I see people do that, for some reason, if I have to compare it to somebody famous that everybody would recognize, I think of a Sarah Palin and how ridiculously vicious she was after the presidential campaign and the, quote, gotcha journalism, unquote. She was enraged, and to a large degree, she still is. She hasn't come off of that high yet. She's still on a warpath, and it just looks like rage then. It doesn't look like you're trying to do anything constructive. It doesn't look like you're trying to just entertain. It looks like you're trying to hurt people. How dare they diss you? Well, fuck that. Be bigger than that. Yeah. John Stewart's one of the best I know at taking attacks. You can whoop that guy's ass up one side and down the other, and he'll just smile and wink and tell a joke. I, I love that about him. That's mature, man. That's what we all need. That's what we need in this business. I don't know. Maybe it's an age thing. Maybe it's a... It just amazes me what pisses people off, the, the smallness of some of it, when the big things are happening. Big, huge masses of people going down the wrong path, and all you got to do is get them to think right. And if you can't get them to think right, well, fucking entertain them then, you know? But but attacking other hosts, I just... I have hundreds of confused listeners. I don't hate any of them. That's good. D do you know somebody that hates some of their listeners, guy? I'm curious. Because that would be bad for their business, is what I'm thinking. But then again, you know, if you can piss off enough of your listeners, they're going to tune in to spy on you, if nothing else. That works for ratings. Not the kind of following I want. People don't like me. I mean, I don't know why they would listen to the show. If people are just keeping tabs on me, what a, what a terrible existence that must be. we got to keep an eye on this one. As Apocalypse said, he's lone and dangerous. I am dangerous. I'm dangerous because I tell the truth, and I'm dangerous because I am, at least at the moment, incorruptible. And, you know, my version of the truth may not match your version of the truth, but there is the absolute truth. So uh, I'm going to try every day to be closer to that than anybody else, at least on this show. And see how it leads me. See how I do, you know. CIA torture was unjustifiable. It's always unjustifiable unless your country's under attack. That shit then becomes justifiable. We are such a fickle fucking group of people. We, we just, humans are, uh, we like to think we're so advanced. And we're not. Compared to what? Compared to the other living creatures on our planet? Okay. But as far as intelligent societies that can use air travel when they weren't born with wings, is that the measure of our intelligence? Because it sure isn't the measure of our maturity. I mean, we, we, are, uh, we are a broken manimal. I mean, that's why I came up with that whole series. We are fucked up. All of us. We're not that far along on the advancement scale. Ugh. I'm looking at world population right now because I needed to be depressed about something. Yeah. Asia. 4.2 billion, uh, billion people in Asia. Mm. This, is, this is 2013. China's got 1.3 billion. Africa, 1.1 billion. Europe, 0.7 billion. North America, 0.5 billion. Yeah, we're just going to keep on breeding. That population growth chart is going damn near vertical now. It's going to get ugly, folks. And it's it's not going to be anything major. It's it, it, I mean, it's going to be hell. Yeah, it's going to be major with climate refugees and all. But I'm talking about water wars and stuff. Where It doesn't have to be over oil. You know, oil all of a sudden doesn't matter when you can't find some water to drink. That's the last fucking thing you're thinking about is some goddamn fossil fuels. Heavy fighting in Gaza. Uh, that headline will be there for the next 2,000 years. Let it go. You can't fix it. If you think you can fix it, good for you. Uh, but everyone before you has failed. So good luck with that. I, I know how to pick my battles, and that's a battle I'm not going to pick. Uh, Islamic State seizes town of Sinjar, pushing out Kurds and sending Yazidis fleeing. That sounds like a bad video game. Dutch recovery mission, personal belongings found at Ukraine plane disaster. Wow. But no human remains. 
Kosi flood alert. Bihar evacuates 50,000 people. This sounds like India. Yeah, it is India. Ebola terrorism cloud Obama's Africa summit. You know, and this makes front page news roaming 150 pound tortoise goes on a city adventure. It's just hard to read that a after Gaza. You, you just, it just doesn't, f you can't feel it. It's, I don't know. It's like smoking a joint after shooting up with heroin. Why, why would you do that? And, and speaking of that, to death, to death, who writes this shit? This is the Washington Post. To death, f instead of deaths, plural, from suspected drug overdose at Maryland concert. So they either meant to write two dead or two deaths. I don't get it. I don't get how you get to work for the Washington Post when you cannot write a headline in proper English. That bothers me. I don't know. I, I, I give up on that. I fuck that. I'm not letting that ruin my night. We're fucking around here. Let's see what Guy has to say in here. Uh, who else showed up in chat? Andrew, what's up, Andrew? Welcome to the chat. Uh, uh, Guy was talking about this executive order we were talking about earlier. He said, attempts to block the congressional law deporting the kids Obama just bust in. Trouble is, the kids need to go to a safe area, but the president wants to write law, not wanting to wait for Congress to do so. Uh, I do agree that this president has tried to increase the powers of the executive branch, uh, but I also believe that the powers of the executive branch, you know, pre-Herbert Hoover were quite a bit more expansive than they are today. So although this is relatively new, what he's doing, I don't think he's, he's going for any more than a third, uh, but I may be wrong about that. That's a, that's subjective anyway. He says, uh, there, there are many speaker shows here now came from blog talk radio. Yep. Mine did too. And have brought some form of Debbie daily war drama with them interesting but redundant how about the cdc agent bring ebola back to the u.s yep that's just great speaking of drugs i'm still waiting for that big flashback since 1981 <laughs> he's waiting for the 70s to come back i don't think that's going to happen man i think the closest we might get some from something like that is um uh, a scanner darkly you know substance x or whatever it was substance d that's what it was called i think I love that movie. I, I wish they hadn't used the goddamn cartoon graphics in it. What a beautiful movie that would have been in just regular film. Well, let's fuck around a little here. What are we going to do now? Well, it seems that the drums of war are beating. And uh, that's everybody getting ready. Well, welcome to the Middle East, where peace is but an illusion. Where's Egypt? Where's Big Brother Egypt in there supposed to moderate all this stuff? You know, all them fucking fat shahs sitting around getting drunk on their oil. Hey, where are you guys stop fighting over there? Hey. Fucking Egypt. We have the pyramids. Is that all? Yeah, that's about it. All right. Sometimes oh, well. when I take a poo, I like to go pee pee too. Yeah, thanks, because, you know, it's evacuation time, come on. It's your evacuation. Banana yeah. phone. Not something you hear every day. I think I'm, I think I'm growing a, I think I'm growing a stinger. What's going on here? Something's going on. What's this? I have hairs growing out the tip of my nose. <laughs> what am I turning into? Something's wrong. I can't figure it out. Are there birds?
I think my eyes just turned inside out. Everybody shut up. See, they do what I tell them on the radio show. I don't know. I don't want to do that. What else can we do? There's war. There's... Well, sometimes you... Sorry, just try to ignore the sound real quick. I'll be done in a half second here. Whew. My goodness. Oh, plaque build up. Oh. Oh, good on there. Right there. Yeah. political man in our time. We should strive to do things in his spirit, not to use violence in fighting for our cause, but by non-participation in anything you believe is evil. Evil. Einstein had thoughts about evil. Well, evil, as Andrew just alluded to, is cops shooting protesters. What's up, Apocalypse? Uh, Andrew, I think what we're going to have to do, and they started this in Florida, and they've started this in a couple of other states where police brutality has led to people dying, uh, homeless people you know, that had no defense, where they're putting their knees on their back to arrest them and they're fucking smothering them. They are passing laws now where you can defend yourself against police legally. Yeah, sounds crazy, doesn't it? Protesters? If you're getting shot, I recommend you have a weapon with you and a legal permit for it. And Bill Cosby would say, I'm nuts for this. But in America, we cannot have cops shooting peaceful protesters. Uh, fuck that. Carry a weapon. And if a cop shoots you and maybe doesn't hit you in the head or the heart, fire back on that motherfucker. And everybody else carrying one, fire back too. Don't put up with that shit. The goddamn police has become militarized in this country since 9-11, and nobody is pulling on that choke chain. They've gone nuts. They have gone nuts. You think you live in a free country? Man, I was looking at the way Mancow defined Amsterdam and how they live free over there and how the cops are joyful and polite and aren't using weapons, and the crime rate is low, and prostitution and drugs are legal, and kids have smiles on their faces. And you go out here, and you have your music too loud in your car, or you try to do public prayer in a school, or you dare reveal too much of your skin with an outfit, and the fucking laws on you. Get the fuck out of here. We, we, we need to know what free is. We don't know what free is in this country. We think we do. We see the stars and stripes and we're blinded by it. This country has a lot of great things going for it. And it is the country I love. And it's the country I'm going to live and die in. Unless I can get to Mexico. Because god damn it you can live like a king down there for a grand a month. And I mean that. Uh... What it doesn't have is freedom, not the way the, the founding fathers intended it. And as population rises, that's going to get worse. Because we have to be protected from one another. Yeti Mike is in the house. Yeti, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, well that's weird because Apocalypse just got a Yeti Mike. Do you have an alter ego Apocalypse that I didn't know about? You saw the homeless guy shot for camping out, then they let the dog on him nice yeah well that that figures you see that shit all the time man go on youtube and you can see people you can get key fobs now that record audio and video i have two of them they cost like five bucks have them on you 
if if not if you're in your car all the time have your cell phone ready to record audio and video if you get pulled over the only way to expose these motherfuckers is to expose these motherfuckers uh, make sure you know your state's wiretapping laws video is legal in just about every state but in most states there's a party system so for example in virginia it's a single party system as long as one party knows the recording is happening that's all that's required but in a state like california all parties being recorded on the audio portion have to give their consent uh, and as long as there's no reasonable expectation of privacy it's admissible in court uh, don't don't let the law badger you you know you have to follow the laws that's true they can arrest you if you don't that's true they have to have probable cause that's also true the only thing you have to say during a traffic stop is nothing you don't have to say a fucking word don't answer questions provide them with what they ask for and then you are free to say am or am i being detained or am i free to go that's all you've got to say that's it i know cap cops have a hard job the good cops i feel bad for them and I think they're in the majority. But the bad cops, you got to get them the fuck out of there. You know, it's ridiculous what can happen if a cop has a bad day. This is why I think we're going to be much better off when we get robots to take over law enforcement. Robots, definitely. With the proper code, you know, completely. They're controllable. Humans aren't. So don't act like you're scared that a robot might pull you over. Oh, Lord, where are we going to go next with this? You know, Alex Jones saying that Michelle Obama is the first tranny. Alex Jones, and this is something I hope you listen to one day. And I know I got under his skin because he actually responded to me on one of my things on his, on his page. Or whoever runs the Alex Jones channel responded. I assume it was him. Maybe it wasn't. But he tried to belittle me by saying, I listen to your show. I like your show. Like, get the fuck out of here. Because you know I'm tearing your ass apart. You can't stand up in a court of logic and reason and have a case if you're Alex Jones. It falls all around you. It just crumbles. And uh, it pisses me off that people follow him. And it pisses me off that he gets away with it. And it pisses me off that nobody's out there fighting against somebody like him. Because they're all going, oh, he's just a nutcase. Yes, he is. But he's getting a bunch of people to follow him. Because he's giving them answers where nobody else will. You know? It, it's what the simple mind is thirsty for. Just give me an answer. Give me one in black and white. Oh, it's goddamn reptiles in the government. That's what did. Goddamn, that makes sense. Now I got a nigger in the White House going to do this. Going to do this. Some tranny motherfucking wife in there. Do this. That's Boom Hour doing his thing. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm glad we have a black guy in the White House. This country needed that. He's not black, by the way. He's biracial. But this country needed it. It's medicine that we needed. We are in our adolescence as a country, and we've got some growing to do. And the next one's probably going to be a woman. If you thought it was bad having a black guy in the White House, wait till we get a woman in there. It's going to split every household in America right down the middle. The fights, because the women are all going to defend Hillary, no matter what she decides. So if the men dare speak out against her, they're going to get hit for that. Get ready. Get ready. You thought the black guy was bad. Wait till the woman's in. Yeah, we need it. We need that medicine. We need to understand tolerance. We need to kill bigotry. Nobody is any more American than anybody else. The way I see you, the closer you are to your constitution, that's how American you are. Regardless of your color or sex. Uh, just curious, on this Live Now page on Spreaker, what happens after some time has gone by? Do they show the shows that have been on the longest at the top, which I think Blog Talk Radio did, or do they gradually just slip down toward the bottom the longer they've been on? Now, well, mine's moved up some. Eh, I don't know. Whatever. I'm leaving that page. Let's see what you guys... Have. Oh, my God. Somebody's writing fucking... Lord, it's a compendium in the chat room. Let's see what he had to say here. Guy Shea said, The Jews are working out some Hitler issues on the Arabs. Don't think we'll, we will get the pit bull back on the leash at this time. USSR is rebuilding one nation at a time. That's possible. Most of the African nation at war. 
let's not forget most of all the oh you meant nations my bad okay I was gonna say uh, next England France Germany and the blue hats will cover US troop pullouts I guess he's talking about UN uh, as we the US military is on the verge of jumping into a conflict on behalf of the Kurds and stand up to Iran and Syria well we're late on Syria and I've said since the beginning we should have been in there as soon as it broke out because if the United States, as the leader of the free world, can't step in when your goddamn ten-year-old's being gang-raped by Assad's regime, and then your family gets decapitated because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, because of the government, holy shit. If we can't get boots on the ground for that, I, I don't know what we're doing. We'll go to Vietnam, but we won't go to Syria. You know, I don't blame the rest of the world for thinking we're a joke. You know, we need a hardcore foreign policy. These are the things we'll get involved for. These are the things we will not. And where there's gray areas, we'll talk about those. But these things would make us lean toward boots on the ground in a gray area. These things would push away. We don't. He says, during this already hot tinderbox, hey, why not piss off South Korea? Japan sets and weight over island ownership with China. Yes, China, our biggest economic import export, needs our economy as we need theirs. It's true. Uh, sure looks like a possible build up to a conventional world war. I, I, I disagree with that guy. I, I agree with just about everything you said in that whole diatribe there. But I, I am not sharing your view on the intensity of these conflicts. Because I've seen bigger issues come and go in the ebb and flow of disagreements. So while they are all singing from a chorus of potential war, I don't see the amplitude rising high enough over these individual issues. Hot button issues right now, real hot button issues for potential world war stuff is going to be Russia and the Ukraine. It's going to be Israel and Palestine. It's going to be Iran and North Korea with their nuclear capabilities. And it's going to be China having growing pains. And they're starting to be a little bullish uh, on the front. So those things can spark some, some movement, real movement. But I don't think they're enough to get two or three major conglomerates to line up against each other and say, let's duke this out the old-fashioned way. I, I don't think so. But, but you know... It's not the business I'm in, so I could be wrong. I'm not in the business of predicting wars. I can tell you who would win them. If you tell me who's playing, I'll tell you who wins. Russia and China unite against the United States. We lose. I'm sorry, but we do. We lose. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. You would think that with the internet coming out and getting popular right around 1992, 94, that since then, with people being able to reach out to each other and understand each other's cultures that much better, with 400 channels on TV, with every country in the world on them, that we might have developed some tolerance for the way other nations run their nations. And it seems to me that what has happened more than that is that more has been exposed that we disagree with and that just ruffles our feathers more so I'm not so sure it's going to turn out to be a great thing after all exposing everybody to the world maybe it moved too fast maybe it just moved too fast and that could be when the historians look back at what did cause our World War III which will be the most devastating one by far because of all the weapons we have available to us from biological to chemical to nuclear uh, from satellite to unknown X projects uh, this is going to be an ugly one the question is when is it going to happen and I, th I don't think we're near one I just don't I don't have that feel and I don't hear the drums beating well we, the United States is going to a trim down slim down force and we've always got our nuclear power and we're going to be aiming at uh, small problems one at a time small in the relative mix of things big in, in some countries and uh, I don't see a big world war breaking out. I don't know. Guy sees a big, a big World War III coming here. Kickstart the lagging economy. Yeah, war does too. War does too. You remember what World War II did for us? I mean, it fucking snapped us right out of depression. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, look, think about it. 20% of our budget goes to the military. 10% of that going to black projects or 7%, something like that. Uh, it, that's a 20% is a ridiculously large number. I mean, once you start a war that people believe in and will get behind, you've just turned over a couple of trillion dollars for that first year. Guaranteed production in the economy. Uh, how we go by about getting it is different. How we go about getting the capital is different. We'll borrow. We don't care. Debt, debt's not a problem. Uh, never has been for us. We'll just borrow. But, you know, we do, uh, things do get moving when wars start. It's a sad truth. And why wouldn't we? Let, just think about it from an economist standpoint. You know, I think back to my college economy class with a fucking Greek professor who could barely speak English, George Zestos. You know who you are, George. And if a guy like him was deciding, one of the first things he'd recommend is war. We have a slow economy. Let's go to war. You know, it's like putting the goddamn shockers on a chest of a dead man. Beep. 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 He's back. He's back. Yep, we started a war. That's all. And he's back. Sad truth. So when does war become the necessary precursor for a boom in the economy? Well, I don't know. The kind of war we got in for after 9-11 just didn't have enough international support to really make a major difference in the economy. It needs to be a global fight between good and evil where anybody that even thinks they're halfway good is involved. I mean, you saw it with World War II, with Russia, and Russia lost a lot in World War II, and the United States and Britain uniting it along with most of Europe, although France had to be on the DL the resistance then you had Italy uh, and Germany and Japan doing their we like to be dictators let's all be dicks and taters in a little group called the dick and taters club and uh, things were working well for them you know the Emperor Mussolini Hitler uh, however they underestimated how far and fast they could spread their force that's what the, uh, against a, a global force against them if they would have kept their lines tighter we might be speaking German now in America so um, and, and we owe a lot to Russia too I hate to say that but we do you know Russia did most of the losing most of the dying and most of the fighting in World War two Hitler luckily got consumed with Russia he got consumed with Stalingrad he couldn't let go of Stalingrad. I mean, that was probably the biggest black hole for his military units that there was. Anyway, World War II is depressing. War is depressing. And I'm thinking we need to we need to we need to lighten things up here. Uh, so I'm going to figure out a way to do it. And I think the best way to start something like that, at least this has been my um, my experience is with some <laughs> laughing just a little bit here and there <laughs> oh why are you booing me why are you booing me there we go that's what i wanted to hear Jesus Christ. Now it's time to... There we go. Yeah. No, nothing makes the human male smile more than dropping the ass bombs. Let's, let's let it roll. Yeah, that's a good one there. Technical foul. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Excuse me. Excuse me there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 my stomach just imploded. Yeah. When I grow up, I want to be the president of a vagina. Initial reports from the crash site indicate the extraterrestrial had no testicles. Pee Wee Herman 
more like urine piss his woman. This is CNN. The following are the numbers of pi to 15 swear words after the decimal. 3.1 fuck shit cock cunt vagina douchebag asshole cocksucker motherfucker piss bugger twat spanker whore wanker jackass sperm. Yeah, take it up a notch. I have a bad case of diarrhea. There you go. There's a little feel good. Did you guys like that? Did it really make you feel like maybe life wasn't all that serious? We could have a little bit of fun with it. Apocalypse says if it all goes to shit, all we have is our family, friends, guns, and God. Anything else is secondary. Although Kevin worships Odin, I think, the old god king of yore. No, I don't have a god, man. I'm, I'm agnostic. Uh, first of all, I ask what you mean by god before I'll even answer if I believe in him. And then, once you define a god, I have to go over to agnostic. So it's almost pointless being agnostic because it simply puts a conditional question upon whether or not I can even answer whether or not I believe in an almighty deity or deities. However, having said all of that, uh, I believe it's possible <coughs> that there's some grand being uh, from another dimension that we don't understand. Uh, I don't think it's likely. And I don't like the idea that life is such a brief glimpse of actuality before it fades back into blackness. It doesn't sound right. It sounds almost wasteful to me. So I'd like to think we go on, but I'll tell you, it, we're going to go on anyway. If we can make it a couple hundred more years, because every everybody's consciousness and everything else will just be stored digitally. You know, you buy server space. You can live forever that way. Uh, let's see what Guy had to say about 1776. Our country has been in a war of some size since 1776. Every 10 years without a break. Why not have a mandatory two-year military service for 21 through 25-year-olds? I'm good with that. Increased troop strength adds to nationalism and or worldview strength. Also help with lowering unemployment, even empty out jails, and untie the legal roadblock of causes. Well, they've used the threat of jail in the past to get people to join the military. I mean, I, I could just keep it as personal as when I was in basic training. I knew a guy in, my, in the Air Force. is called a flight. And in my flight, this guy had, uh, had a choice. He, you know, he scored really well on the ASFABs. And he could either go to jail for 90 days or join the Air Force. And he joined the Air Force. And so I, I think in some ways they're already incorporating that. I don't know if they still do that. I think it's, it depends on the branch of service and the job you're going for in that branch. But, um, yeah, I think wars have averaged. I, I, think, I think you're right. I think they've averaged a war like every 20 years or something. And uh, we've, gone, we've gone like 12 and 1. We're, we're looking pretty good on, on the war front. But uh, unfortunately, when you send your bravest in your society to fight and die, you begin to change that society through natural selection, which becomes unnatural selection so that the bravery begins to weed itself out and you become what war with mexico that might be next that might be next apocalypse but let me remind you of that quiet enemy to the north you cannot trust canadians with their beady eyes and their floppy heads you cannot up there as dennis leary said sharpening their goddamn ice skates you can't trust them Shatner said it. Shatner said, listen, if Canada and the United States go to war, I'm Canadian by birth, and I will be obligated to kill Americans. And he was joking. Or was he? See, he has a way of telling jokes while being totally serious. You might have to kill Shatner, guys. I'm just saying you may have to kill Shatner if we go to war with Canada. 
Guy said, when I was in the Army, we had a group from Flint on join and be set free, early 80s Army. I, I guess you mean from Flint, Michigan? Flint on join and be set free. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So you actually, he, he actually got out of jail versus facing jail or military service. Uh, that's interesting. I had a guy on the show. He was an investigative reporter. It was a while ago. And uh, he talked about how the CIA would scoop people out of jail and send them on overseas missions. And if they survived, they could come back to the U.S. and basically do what they wanted. They were given these federal protections where they couldn't be arrested or prosecuted by local law authorities. And uh, Bill Dean is his name. You should look that shit up. I mean, it's scary what these guys get away with if they manage to survive their CIA missions and get back in one piece. They just basically give them a pass. It's a, it's a fuck everybody pass. We might have war with Mexico. We might. Uh, what I don't like is, uh, here's the whole immigration thing for me in a nutshell. I, I'm, you know I'm a sympathetic person. I understand that we all came here. Even the Indians, the Native American Indians, weren't born here. I mean, we started in Africa. They migrated. They came the slow way. Uh, the Vikings came the fast way. Then the Spaniards came the fast way. Then the English and the rest of the Europeans. And, you know, and now the Mexicans are coming. And all of a sudden we have a problem with the Mexicans coming. But the whole thing is this. There's a legal process to follow to get into this country. And when you don't use that process, you're telling me you don't respect the laws of the country. So why should the country respect and protect you then? There are people waiting in line the legal way from fucking Denmark to get here. That can't get here because the, now there's not enough space and the resources are too low and the cases are slowing and everybody's dealing with the Mexican immigration problem. My whole thing is, if you're going to come here, come here. I want you here. But do it legally. Because for all I know, you're fucking solder out totter, the next motherfucking martyr, uh, coming across there through the tunnels with the drug cartels. And I have a problem with that. Do it the legal way. Do it the legal way or your ass should be sent back. I know that sounds harsh. Some of my friends will say, my God, Kevin, I thought you were sympathetic. I am sympathetic. But you don't come into a country illegally. Go try that shit in North Korea. Go try that shit in Syria. I want you to get into Iran without asking them. Just dig a tunnel. See how that works out for you. Yeah. You don't come in illegally. Follow the fucking rules. There's a reason we have the rules in place. There's a reason. that we, They didn't just get made up to support a larger part of a bureaucracy. There's actually a good fucking reason. You open your borders. What you're saying is, all come on, come all, friends and enemies alike. Because who can't beat us from the outside can beat us from the inside. Come on in. Yep. Well, you guys have slowed down in the chat room, and that's usually my cue to get ready to get the fuck up out of here. So hopefully you got another show to go to. Uh, you know... The show started at 10, so two hours is my limit before my voice goes. So I might be shaving a few minutes off of that, but not much. But I'll give a little bit of music on the way out and round it out as a two-hour show. <sighs> Low Tag Blanco, Slumlord, that's a good one. Since we're talking about Mexico, I hate that I feel like I have to learn some Spanish now. And then we'll go with, yeah, ooh, since you guys are feeling in a bit of a debating mood tonight, we'll do the Papa Zulu, a story of striking the root. This is striking down public unions. Um, I've got mixed feelings on unions. So I, I like this song. This song is pretty anti-union, but, you know, it, it, it brings up the concerns. And a lot of people aren't even aware of these union problems that are happening. They're just, well, they're too small. They're not on my radar yet. Well, they're, they're huge, really. So um, unions need to be uh, have some kind of oversight. Uh, they can't just be, they become gangs. If, they, if they're not, they just become gangs. That's all they are. Money going up the pyramid, people at the top working the controls. It's that simple. 
Uh, anybody got any last words to say in chat that you would like me to show? Thank you, Guy. Thank you. I appreciate it. I didn't, you know, the sh one of those shows that sometimes I regret doing a show. I get like 45 minutes into it and go, what the fuck was I thinking doing a show tonight? I didn't have anything. And then I realize I never have anything. I just make shit up as I go. That's what I do. It's an exercise in creativity for me. I think those nights where I think, why the fuck did I do a show? I'm thinking, I don't have the energy to be creative. Mexico has tons of oil and resources we could plunder. Good point, Apocalypse. So, we would win. We would be Mexico very easily. Quite handily. Um, I, I, I hope we don't go to, you know, god damn it. I, I'm tired of war. I, I'm actually getting, I'm actually getting a little numb to the concept of war. You know, when I first joined, nobody thinks about it now, but you have to understand the mindset we were in. The first Gulf War had broken out, and it's kind of like Korea. It's, it's the forgotten war. And uh, the training, even though it became a fucking 72-hour war, the training, the fear factor that they were going to use NBC weapons, nukes, biochem, all that was there. We were in training, intense training for it. You know, I was in basic when the trouble started. I was in tech school when we invaded and they told us, don't be surprised if you find yourself in Saudi Arabia on a plane next week and you're toting an M16 around an Air Force base doing guard duty, regardless of the fact that we've been trained in electronics. So, um, yeah, this is one of the longer ones, man. Thank you, Pocles. I'm glad you, you bothered to stop by, too. Uh, I got to go listen to the show about your mother's basement and see what the fuck was going on there. Too bad Mexico's filled with Mexicans. I think Mexican chicks are hot. For the most part. Uh, but they have that attitude. So that's not good. Very evil. When they get mad, you don't want to... Jesus Christ, they're terrifying. I mean, maybe it's the Nordic chicks that never get mad. Who, where, where are these fucking Ricola... I mean, that, that's where you got to find your women if you don't want them to get pissed and controlling. I like the power the older unions once had. Well, you guys can, li if you haven't heard uh, this song, it, which is really someone basically speaking and, and these sound bites about unions doing these fucked up things where they're breaking rules and they're trying to get people out of work and the whole Wisconsin debacle, uh, that's in there. Uh, I think you'll like this. I'll play that one first. And then I'll play the Lotag Blanco Slumlord. Yeah, that sounds good. That's that's where we're going to do it. Oh, Purple Nurple, you're in the way, brother. Thank you. Papa Zulu, a story of striking the root, striking down public unions. Tell me how you feel about it if you decide to hang out and listen to this one. It's about a four-minute, uh, well, it's five-minute song. It's pretty interesting. All right, well, thank you guys for stopping by. Guy says, as a parting comment here, whatever war conflict we enter into next, we need not get into the country rebuilding business. I agree with that, too. We need to get out of this whole God of politics thing and, and tell people they can live on their own and do their own thing. And if we can afford to assist them, we will. If we can't, we will not. That's all. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for coming by, especially Guy Shea, who somehow found a way to stick it out in this show. Apocalypse, who came in late, but who's always roaming on Spreaker. And if you have a Spreaker show, you are at risk of having him as a listener to your show. So beware, because he's a thinking robot. And uh, last but not least, Andrew, Zodiac 12, who stopped in who brought up the very important point about police brutality. And uh, sorry, Yeti Mike, uh, whoever the fuck you are, uh, I didn't get to know you, so hopefully maybe on another show. And to everybody else, uh, fuck you, you know? I just feel like saying fuck you tonight. So fuck you, and that's the end of the show. And since that is that, here goes this. So I'm gonna begin about this concept of institutional corruption. We have power because there are more than 3.2 million people who are willing to pay us hundreds of millions of dollars in dues each year because they believe that we are the unions that can most effectively represent them. Over 80% of our costs are in personnel 
and hopefully the teachers can realize is that when they start to negotiate the next time. It is not granted because we care about children. Corrupt at any age and its affiliates are affected because we have tangling. Hundreds of millions of dollars in power. Shaking. It is not because we have a vision of a great public school for every child. We are the union. We are the union. The result was national agenda too often skewed in favor of those with the power to tell the Because we have power. Institutional corruption. Dozens of school districts around Wisconsin canceled classes Thursday after hundreds of teachers called in sick to attend union protests in Madison. This is how it should have been all the other days, and it was. And it's very exciting. It's sad for our kids, but it's good for the teachers. Are you signing, are you signing doctor's notes? Yeah. Why didn't you do it earlier today, sir? But you didn't. You didn't. You were supposed to be on house to at least be on house floor to allow them to have a vote. You didn't do it. Why not? I'm not so sure. That's my job today. My job today is to delay uh, a vote on peace legislation. People in the state have said we, we have not union. had time to, we are the to union. Like What's your What's your position there, sir? In the Senate? Sir, let's get what's going. your position? In, why did you flee the state, sir? Why did you flee the state of Wisconsin so you wouldn't have to do your job, sir? Hundreds of millions of dollars in system of dependency where the special interests indirectly through the lobbyists control members producing this marionette congress a system of dependence upon the lobbyist fundraisers these senators the missing 14 have been found they have been located and now they're using their vacation to fundraise out of state so do we have root here nea and its affiliates are effective because we have power. Do we have a sense of exactly what's behind this craziness? Hundreds of millions of dollars in power. Well, in my view, the only way to strike at this route is to cut the connection between these funders and our government. And the only way to do that is to embrace the idea of a Republican. The funders are not the people. Hundreds of millions of dollars in power. And respond in the way our framers intended, with a movement, a citizens' movement that starts in the states, that starts in this city, to strike at the root to this problem. The trees will crash. The union. Corruption will collapse. The union. The trees will crash. The union. Corruption will collapse. The union. The will die. When it comes time to vote for our legislatures and legislators and governors. In 2010, one public teacher union spent $2,143,588 to lobby Wisconsin senators, four times more than the nearest corporate interest. Public unions lobbied in order to block local government ability to make budget cuts by arbitration through collective bargaining laws. The people of Wisconsin, democratically elected representatives, and a governor not corrupted by the public unions, to limit collective bargaining arbitration, allow public workers the choice to be in a public union, and reduce pension and benefits by 5%. These actions cut the root of the corruption, the flow of public funds to public unions, letting the funds flow to public workers and local governments, where they belong. Because our constitution begins with, 
we the people, not we the public unions, and respond in the way our framers intended, with a movement, a citizens' movement that starts in the state to strike at... You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsten. Listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsten. Ladies and gents, this is Kevin Kirsted, host of Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. I hope you're enjoying the show. Truth on Tap is focused on bringing you absolute truth about everything from mainstream media to comedy, from psychology to the paranormal. This show keeps it real, not the fake kind of real, the real kind of real. That same spirit also covers our Caps on Tap show about the Washington Capitals. Caps on Tap shows air only after Capitals wins at this time. Please come like our Facebook page and join the conversation at Facebook.com slash Truth on Tap show. Truth on Tap has been picked up and promoted by iHeartRadio, the internet audio mega monster. So shows are available there as well as on Spreaker and a limited selection on iTunes. To get in on a show's chat, you can chat from the Facebook page I mentioned or go to www.spreaker.com slash user slash truth on tap and look for the live episode or call in at 910-NO-LYING. That's 910-665-9464. Thanks again for checking out Truth on Tap and Caps on.